Hi everybody, it's Paul here from Ballistic Blood Bullets uh, with some B-movie VHS goodness on the action movie front to talk about and in particular uh, with David A. Pryor. Um, watched quite a lot of his films and he's made lots and lots if you check him out on the IMDB you'll see he's made a lot of the low budget action films uh, from varied genres including science fiction and uh, a little bit of horror but I watched this one quite recently it's a final sanction very clever movie made on a, a tight budget but effective use of the budget that was available without question and it's an interesting premise which asks the question what would happen if rather than having an all-out world war between two mighty nations what would be a better way of dealing with it than having two appointed fighters combat trained soldiers actually fight for their countries on behalf of their countries saving the need to have all-out war and obviously negating the need to involve and hurt innocent people. So this premise is what uh, David A. Pryor has very cleverly come up with and uh, he's delivered a very very good little action movie. It's, it's got a slightly futuristic feel to it obviously because we're looking at the prospects of doing without war and as I say just involving two individuals and these two individuals are Ted Pryor who uh, is most of you may well be aware and certainly with a clue in the surname is David A. Pryor's brother who appears in a lot of his films and he's up against Robert Zadar and he's the chap if any of you have seen him in his previous films blessed with a mighty chin big built guy but he's got a, he's a good character, on screen character. He's like a, a life sized um, action figure self, an action doll come to life so he, he's perfect for this role. And The two of them are trained, high intensive training. Uh, Ted Pryor's character is actually taken out of solitary confinement and he's been uh, processed for crimes, war crimes, uh, crimes against uh, uh, the nation or uh, allegedly so as a, as a theme without the film, throughout the film that you'll pick up on where he actually has been framed but that all comes to be and pass in the film as explained but uh, Ted Pryor's character uh, trains as I say as does Robert Zadars and he's trained by the mighty William Smith who himself uh, you'll recognise when you see him when you get the opportunity to watch the film hopefully uh, he's uh, probably his most infamous role as a, an on-screen bad guy is the character in the TV series from the mid-70s, Rich Man, Poor Man and uh, he really is one of these ubiquitous characters uh, as, a, as far as a bad guy is concerned and he, he truly steals every scene that he, he's in and this is no exception but this movie move, moves along at a cracking pace uh, lots of action and certainly when it gets down to it when the two of them come out together on the uh, field of combat, uh, they're firing obviously all the their uh, chosen weapons, uh, handguns, knives, there's even a bazooka involved. Uh, but when it comes down to it, the final scenes, it's mano to mano, guy against guy, uh, respect between the two, and uh, the issues of politics and world uh, nonsense as far as governments are concerned is all put to one side and they respect each other, but they still battle it out. And, the best man, or may the best man win, and uh, therefore negate the need for a world, world war. Terrific scenario, well played out, well directed, good actors, low budget, doesn't really show too much, it would be an altogether different film if it had millions of dollars spent on it, so this type of movie always works well on a, a tight budget. So uh, a very good introduction for anyone who's interested in watching a David A. Pryor film final sanction. A couple of other movies I've got of uh, David Pryor's 
on VHS, also come highly recommended. Uh, one I watched uh, lots long ago, a film called Jungle Assault. Uh, this one pretty much speaks for itself. Again, as I say, David A. Pryor, uh, lots of action, lots of explosions. And uh, it's, it's a tight little movie again, uh, low budget, but um, good use of again. You get uh, all the highlights of guns and uh, knives, explosions, bazookas again. There's a fantastic scene involving a lady with a bazooka and uh, the result is it just has to be seen to be believed. Uh, they've even ex expenditure for helicopters in this one, so it always adds a bit of the Bruno Mattei flair to these proceedings. This one was made in about 1988. So again, David Pryor was, you know, he was flying the flag for the for America really in uh, in competition almost with the the brilliance of the Italian mid 80s uh, well throughout the 80s action movies and he did a pretty sterling job to be honest with you uh, so this one again comes highly recommended it's a uh, jungle assault uh, one of my favorites of David A. Pryor's is this little number which is Lost Platoon now again all the same ingredients that uh, uh, he's very renowned for and a great flair for the action but this one is an intriguing story insofar as it's I think it's Vietnam uh, soldiers and um, one of them gets bitten by a vampire and rather than let his buddies in the war be killed as most tragically were uh, during the Vietnam War he bites his fellow comrades in arms and they become vampires as well and together there's a small there's about five or six of them a little platoon formed of basically army vampires and uh, they survive through the Vietnam War and um, beyond the Vietnam War as the undead and uh, of course, having found that they are pretty much immortal, they then use their talents as uh, vampires to terrorise the free world. And uh, as they don't age, they live on beyond the Vietnamese War, the Vietnam War, and start to uh, use their talents vicariously and. Uh, to not only thirst and live off people, but to uh, try and gain riches and valuables and money and all that sort of thing. Uh, a lust for avarice. But uh, there's some very good sequences in this. There's obviously some quite a lot of night scenes because they they are vampires in the true sense of the the word vampire. But they are uh, not able to come out during the sunlight daylight hours but uh, quite quirky lots of explosions again as usual but it's got the added interest and diversity of the vampire law and uh, this one is very much worth seeking out a very cool little play on the action genre now one of David A. Pryor's most infamous and most well-loved movies is a film called Deadly Prey. I think a lot of the action fans out there will certainly have this in their collection and will have watched it. Uh, unlike myself, I am embarrassed to say, but having now again got back into watching some of these David A. Pryor films, this is going to be a priority. I most definitely will be watching this film. Um, it's sat proudly in my collection for a long time and um, I've always wanted to watch it, but never got around to watching it so far. It uh, seems to have a classic story of... Um, back in the early 30s, there's a film called The, the Hounds of Zarkov, which is the most dangerous game. It stars uh, Fay Ray. And um, it's uh, Joel McRae as well, is, is the lead male star in Most Dangerous Game. But it, it's basically... Uh, the story behind this is... Um, humans being tracked and killed by hunters 
and uh, I think Ted Pryor stars in the lead role here as a, again probably an ex uh, Vietnam war vet but uh, he's one that's um, picked out to be set free and chased but of course he knows how to look after himself and uh, turns the table on the hunters and um, I'm sure delivers his own brand of action certainly with a Rambo type setup and kit that he's got uh, adorning his waist uh, and chest there, knife and gun and grenades uh, will certainly kick some bad guy ass so looking forward to that and certainly what I'm also very excited about and definitely looking forward to is the proposed sequel which is in the planning stage and David A. Pryor's written it and he's got a, a website up at the moment just pan up to the computer here, which speaks for itself. The sequel proposed uh, quite rightly and appropriately, quite apt, called The Deadliest Prey. So this is the sequel to Deadly Prey and uh, you can check that out on his website. I'll just get the uh, website address for you. So there we are. That's the website that you can check out the details on this film. And it's got a, a cool little um, advanced tidbit of a trailer for the film. And he's looking for financial backing and people to um, make a pledge. And for the pledges, he, he's offering all sorts of nice little things. Um, some of the things that uh, we can just scroll through here and have a look at. Uh, there we go. A pledge for $10 or more. And uh, he very kindly send you a flyer of the artwork of the movie, signed by Brother Ted and himself. A pledge of $50 or more, and you get a DVD copy of the final movie, signed by Ted and uh, himself and one of the stars, David Campbell. And there's other pledges as well for various goodies along the uh, the website. And uh, I suggest if you get a moment, if you're interested at all in low budget filmmaking or particularly David A. Pryor, check it out. Uh, send him a, an email, send him a, a note asking him anything about the film and uh, I'm sure he'd be only too happy to receive your inquiries and being a, a decent guy as I believe he, he is he, he'd almost certainly give you a response himself so there we are, that's his uh, upcoming project Deadly as Prey and um, as I say, uh, his prequel to that Deadly Prey, I will be checking out without further ado and very much looking forward to it so there we are, that's my uh, short little dissertation almost to David A. Pryor my appreciation of his films I've got a lot more but those were certainly ones that came to hand and ones that I've watched fairly recently and have most enjoyed so as I say give him some time, check him out read about him on the IMTB and please do stop by his website thanks for checking me out uh, thank you for watching and uh, thank you all for your subscriptions and uh, as I say checking out the the website uh, along may it continue thank you very much uh, so till next time thank you take care bye for now